Hello everybody, I'm Nick and recently one of my favorite programming content creators, Forrest Knight, great channel by the way, link in the description and link of his video in the description, check it out, made a video called C Shop is Java Done Right. And I haven't watched it because as you know, and if you don't, what are you doing here? I'm a C Shop developer and have been for many years. I started with Java and I've written a lot of Java, I've written a lot of Kotlin as well. And I think I have a very good opinion of what C Shop and Java is and what it isn't. So I want to watch this video and react to it and give you my feedback on what I think it actually is or isn't. So let's just take a look at what Forest Knight has C to say. C Sharp is Java done right. That's I'm going to give you my take on this straight away. I think Kotlin is Java done right. And in some ways, Kotlin is also C Sharp done right. Kotlin basically took the JVM to run on and looked at Java. And because Java is, in terms of a the language design perspective, it's interesting to say the least. Um, and then they saw what other languages did well, like C Sharp and other functional languages, and they just made Kotlin. And Kotlin, in terms of design, is one of my favorite programming languages, more favorite than C Sharp too. I know, I know, shame on me for saying this, but I think Kotlin is a better designed language than C Sharp. Of course, it has the benefit of hindsight, but if I could actually get paid money to write Kotlin, I would write Kotlin over C Sharp. The problem is if you want to write Kotlin, you kind of have to be an Android developer. Yes, it can run on the server and so on, but I don't know many jobs that do that. So that's where I stand. That's what a lot of people claim. I'm not saying it. I'm just the messenger. Okay, so he did say okay, it. Okay, I did say it. Okay. I said it. A lot of devs believe it. And today we're going to see if it's actually true. In Java, see? generics are kind of a lot. They, they yeah. look like they handle type. So, okay. So, great bit of trivia, in case you don't know. Yes, in Java, generics are a lie because the compiler would basically strip all the types and then you end up boxing them anyway because it's type erasure at compile time. That's just how Java compiles stuff. And the fun fact about this, you know who worked at Java's implementation of generics? Matt Storgensen, the lead C Sharp designer. I know, crazy safely but under the hood it all gets erased at compile yeah. time that means if you want to store integers and, in a list you end up and that has a bit of a performance hit as well even though memory in, in java is a bit weird because is it like everything on the heap i got good at c sharp way after i wrote my first amateur java code so if you're a java developer watching this Leave a comment in the description down below letting me know when I'm wrong. I really want to learn. Boxing them up into objects, which adds overhead. Okay. Though with Project Valhalla, Java has introduced specialized generics to reduce boxing overhead. See. That's interesting. Can C Sharp do something like this? I guess C Sharp already tries to reduce overhead because now that we even have the sort of can this be allocated on the stack on, on JIT time and the JIT will try to optimize that as well. So we have a lot of memory optimizations as well. But Java has kind of always been fast with even like the, the bad memory approach and the bad boxing approach. So kudos to the JVM. It's really good. Sharp, on the other hand, has reified generics. Yeah. It knows we have what real... type you used at runtime. So when you store integers in a list, it stays efficient. No yes. boxing, no surprises. It's, it's just faster and smoother. Yeah, whatever you have on the code you write, that's exactly, it's a thing on the compiler level uh, and the runtime as well. And what about properties? In Java, if you want... That was one of my biggest, oh, I can't stress enough how much of a thing it was for me when I went from a Java developer to a C Sharp developer and someone told me, and properties look like this. I think it's going to show that in the video. But to have to write a field, a getter, and a setter every single time is insane. And I know there's tools like Lombrock as well that allows you to sort of code generate based on a, a property, so based on a field. So basically you create the field and then you add an attribute on that field and then you will code generate a getter and a setter every time. Just make it a feature. Don't, 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 like you're talking around the fundamental design flow of the language. Just make it easy for me. When I access a private field, you write a getter yeah. and a setter every oh. single time. It clutters your code yeah. with boilerplate. And don't say records because those aren't the same thing. I know. So I've read about records in, in, in Java. They got the sort of conceptually similar thing as C Sharp had for years because C Sharp had records for years, both for classes and structs. You're about to say Lombok. Well, guess what? C Sharp has effectively Lombok built in. So presumably. Thing. I know you're about to say. 
you add this data attribute on the class and you make it a data class and then this will generate um, a getter and a setter for any field you have in your class. Neat, great, make it a feature of the Lombok. language. Well, guess what? C Sharp has effectively Lombok built in. C Sharp has first class properties. Yeah. One line. So basically you just say get and set and then you can use the property anywhere. And what this does behind the scenes on the compiler level is it actually generates a private field called underscore, well, funny symbols and then underscore name. And then you have a get underscore name and set underscore name. So if you have this property in your code, in your class, and you try to create a method called get underscore name or set underscore name, the compiler complains because you have two of them. And even though it's not obvious, the compiler during the lowering process will generate that for you. That's why you can't have it. We even get more uh, sort of feature upgrades on this specific problem because even this, when you need customization in the getter and the setter, it unwraps to what you had before. So Microsoft is also introducing the field keyword in C Sharp 14 that allows you to not have to go back to the Java ways. Done, readable, it's clean, nice. way less typing. Again, it is what we as Java developers use Lombok to simulate. Yeah. But in C Sharp, it's just built in. Now, what about exceptions? Oh, I thought he said, what about extensions? So one of the biggest features of C Sharp that Java does not have, at least last time I checked, it didn't have is extension methods. And now we're getting extension members as well. So extension properties, extension methods, and so on. So if a class doesn't have a method that you need, you don't have to make a static util or helper sort of static method. You can have an extension instance member you retroactively add into a class which is fantastic. It's just great. But don't know why Java doesn't have that. Exceptions in Java suck because they're checked, but they're a lie. Java has the idea of checked exceptions, where the compiler forces you to catch or declare every oh. single exception that might be thrown. Oh. It sounds good in theory, but in practice, it just makes your code base a mess of yeah, it looks like catch blocks shit. for things you often don't care about. C Sharp, on the other hand, skips checked exceptions. If the method says it throws this exception, you have to either handle it or forward the throw. It's terrible. It's bad. Exceptions entirely. You catch them if yeah. you want to. If not, it's on you. It keeps your code focused on what matters and avoids the... And if you're, if you're a Java dev saying, yeah, but this helps writing safer code. No, you write dirtier code because you can still know what something is throwing in C sharp and handle it. Like it's not a mystery. Ceremony. Now let's talk about async code. Java added... Another massive, I know I keep pausing the video, another massive thing. Java for years has been talking about how they're going to do the whole asynchronous programming model and they changed 15,000 models until what was introduced from what I understand in the past couple of versions or latest version, I could be wrong. They've tried this computable futures thing, which sort of works similar to how um, continue with would work the old way in C Shop before a single weight was added. And there's many other ways to do it but they don't have something that looks like you write synchronous code, but it turns asynchronous behind the scenes using the await async keyword, which by the way, C Sharp invented. Not the concept of asynchronous code, of course, but the syntax of making a method that is async and then saying await that method on execution. C Sharp invented that with C Sharp 5. Completable futures and reactive libraries, but it still doesn't have language level. Did they say com computable futures? Completable futures. Async and await keywords. C sharp does. Yeah. You just write async for code years. Like it's sync. And people still get it wrong, by the way, in C sharp. Synchronous. It reads top to bottom. It's cleaner. It's more intuitive. And yeah. it's way easier to maintain. But hold on now. Java 24 just introduced virtual thread. But doesn't this just block the thread? To address concurrency in a different way. And that's awesome. Don't get me wrong. Wait, how now does not pin carry a thread? What changed? The syntax looks the same. Wait, did I miss something? Now it's the same code. Wait, you can do that? You can write synchronous code, but it doesn't look. I have to Google that after this video, because if they did this, I don't know how you configure it because nothing changed. But if you can do this, then Java is Wow, miles ahead. That's a great, great way to do it. Wrong. But when it comes to syntax and readability, there's something I like about async and await. How about collections okay. and data filtering? Java has streams now. They work, but... Streams were added in Java 8. And I was still a Java developer at the time. I hated streams. 
They are. Oh, I remember having so many issues trying to reprocess the same stream because I thought it would work like Link, which is the C sharp equivalent, which we had for many, many years before Java as well. And it just said close stream. I, I, problems with streams all the time. From what I understand, Java developers like them. But even the syntax to create a list in Java was always weird to me. All this as something, arrays dot, like it's just a nightmare. They are a little bit clunky. You chain a bunch of methods together, you wrap everything in collect, and hope IntelliJ fills in the rest. Yeah, that's how they do to list, by the way, in Java. You have a static collectors class, and you have to say collectors dot to list, and then you get the class. Like, Oh, in C sharp, you just say to list. That's it. To list, to array, to dictionary. It just works. I don't know why they had to make it so complicated. We use Eclipse. Well, what are you doing with your life? Yeah. C sharp has link Q. Link. Link Q. Link. It's link, not link Q. I get it. I'm not a Java developer. You're not a C sharp developer. It's link. It stands for language integrated query, and it has two forms the method form and the bad, in my opinion, query form, which looks like you write SQL in C sharp. Let's see if he shows one of the two. It's like writing SQL in your code. It's re That's not the writing SQL in your code version. I think what he did is he has an editor and he gave this video to an editor and asked him, hey, make this for me. And the editor didn't know to use the SQL-like syntax. This is the method version of Link, not the SQL-like version of Link. Readable, it's powerful, it doesn't Same feel like idea. you're building a pipeline for their pipeline. <laughs> LinQ, it just makes sense. Link. But Java has finally got some decent pattern matching now, which makes your code way less for a boat. But C Sharp had it for years, yeah, it's same thing. So it, it took them long enough to catch up to C Sharp on that one, but they did. It's kind nice. Of. Now let's talk about the ecosystem, aha. Uh -huh. This is where Java... <sighs> Does Java have open source projects that keep turning commercial lately? Please leave a comment down below and let me know, because we do have that quite a bit in Java's Dutch. got the upper hand. Java has Spring and Hibernate and Maven and Gradle and Kafka and sp uh, Spark. Okay, we have Aspire. We have NuGet. You have... I mean, Kafka is just a tool. You can't say you have Kafka. Everyone has Kafka. Kafka is a... Pr it's like you say, I have Stack Overflow because Stack Overflow is written in C Sharp. It doesn't make any sense. And Maven... Okay, 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 okay. You're losing me. Hibernate, we have Entity Framework and Dapper. Park. Hold That's your horses. What I was trying to say. I was thinking Maven Gradle. Maybe you you're like I don't want Maven and Gradle in my life. Exactly. Well, guess what? You have to deal with it. You okay. get to deal with it. But the Java ecosystem is massive. C Sharp, on the other hand, is it's tighter. It's more curated. Especially the problem with the .NET ecosystem is that Microsoft makes so much of that stuff that he just showed, like Hibernate, for example. We have the Microsoft version for it. They make it. Who's gonna compete with a billion trillion dollar company's version of that exact same thing? They have the resources. So the ecosystem is smaller, mainly because Microsoft has already done everything over the vast majority of what we need for us. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Meh, but it is what it is. Especially with .NET Core being cross-platform. But for sheer volume and we, enterprise adoption... By the way, we don't call it .NET Core anymore. It's just .NET. You just say .NET. It's a cross-platform thing. Java still wins. So is C-sharp actually Java done right? Uh, in a lot... Let's see. Let's see. I think no. I think Kotlin is Java than Rice. Right. Yeah, like it does better things than Java. It's like it cleaned okay. up those rough edges and made things easier and faster and okay. just more pleasant to use. Yeah. Generics, properties, async, link, queue, better syntax. Link. Link. Fewer landmines. But that's Java of old. You know, Java yeah. has caught up. Java 24. Java has been releasing like crazy and they have released many nice features and the way they categorize their features too with what goes in, what's in preview. Like, I really like Java's approach to releasing new features. I just think it's a little too late. Me, people have moved on. And people have moved on for, from C Sharp as well and other languages and new, more fancy languages because the cross-platform problem is not as big as it used to be, which is why these languages were made in the first place, well, not C Sharp, Java. Uh, but yeah. Or and Beyond are introducing features that fix a lot of historical baggage. But I don't know why we're talking about this, because if you want the best of both worlds, just use Kotlin. What are you doing? Exactly. Just use Kotlin. It's a great language. Ah, you're so right, Forest Knight. Mwah. You're great. Oh, yeah. Um, Jobs. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah. Typically, you want to get paid. You and can't while work. I do really like Kotlin, Java jobs are plentiful. Yeah. C Sharp jobs are plentiful. Or yeah. at least I should say, 
not going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. If you're building your own project, use what works for you, Kotlin. But if you ever hear someone say C Sharp is Java done right, well, now you know why. I 100% agree with basically everything he said. I think he could have added more examples, but for a four minute video, I think he added more than enough. I don't think any of the two languages going anywhere soon. C Sharp is in fact growing and we see that both in the Stack Overflow surveys. C Sharp also has an advantage of being used in game development with Unity and many new developers pick it up as well, more than Java. So it has many benefits. And I also say it on Dome Train because Dome Train, my Costis platform is also growing. And actually, it's the second anniversary of the platform this month. So until the 1st of May, you can use code BIRTHDAY to a checkout to get 40% off everything. Any course, any bundle, any workshop, or Dome Train Pro. Link in the description. But now one from you. What do you think about all this? And do you prefer one language over the other? If you prefer Java, please let me know why you prefer Java over C Sharp without saying because it's open source, because it's cross-platform, because, because C Sharp is all that. Talk features. Leave a comment down below. Let me know. And as always, keep coding.